So um, this talk is going to be about anticipating new business models. And I'll be using uh, the business that I created 10 years ago as an example, um, but also kind of talking a little bit about what's, uh, what the future is going to look like, at least how I envision it. Um, when you start talking about new business models, uh, one of the things that kind of be, has become almost gospel in management books or um, you know, uh, business books is this notion of uh, Wayne Gretzky talking about skating to where the puck is going to be. Uh, it's this kind of truism that's, uh, that's become a little bit trite. Um, but you can make a case that like, that's what Apple did with the iPod when they were looking at the trends associated with data storage uh, or data access and speed enabling these new streaming business models from a Netflix or Spotify or even the commoditization of uh, cell phones uh, to enable Bird and Lime and a, a handful of other companies to just flood the market with uh, what feels like billions of these little $7 electric scooters. Um, so companies are trying to identify these trends uh, and figure out what to do. The three trends that I've spent 10 years of my life uh, chasing and, and now nearly $100 million chasing uh, is around uh, the rise of uh, the emerging middle class, um, the fact that smartphones are becoming increasingly uh, inexpensive and, and data costs are virtually free in a market like India where we operate, um, I can buy a one gig data pack for 10 cents. Um, and then the last component is the fact that there's these internet behemoths that are going out and uh, are, are earning hundreds of dollars in aggregate uh, of profit for every incremental new user that comes online. And so where we skated 10 years ago was the fact that, you know, the, the belief, our mission, that the internet should be free in these emerging markets. The fact that the, the incremental value of new users uh, is higher than the cost of connectivity. Uh, and, um, you know, it's, it's difficult, you know, to basically skate somewhere where the, where, where the action is not happening and, and sit there and wait. Um, but it's exciting that, you know, we're now operating in 100 countries. Uh, there are tens of millions of people that rely on us for connectivity. Um, uh, but, uh, but it's, you know, we're still, you know, even with $100 million uh, invested into building this global platform, we're still struggling to make unit economics work. Um, and I think that's kind of a trend when you start thinking about business models of the future. Um, you know, they, they aren't easy to implement. I mean, some are, I think, easier than others. Uh, there was a paper just a, uh, that came out a couple months ago where these physicists were able to predict, uh, using polygenic scoring, uh, a wide range of different disease factors using just DNA SNPs. And they were even, even able to predict height within, uh, within one inch. Um, and I think as you know, the world gets, uh, you know, IVF essentially becomes more and more prevalent, uh, embryonic selection uh, is now something that is becoming a bigger and bigger deal. I can run these polygenic scores on my, on my laptop. And so, you know, if I were trying to figure out which embryo I want to, uh, I, I, I want to have implanted, uh, why wouldn't I start using these algorithms? Um, and, th and then I think you can start thinking about, you know, these tangential business models about how as these demographic shifting is, is going to happen, uh, you can start thinking about a Yelp for, for surrogate mothers to help uh, parents in need connect with the optimal uh, mother. Um, there's a, uh, uh, some really exciting work in DNA synthesis uh, that, well, I think, you know, it's probably too early to go long on uh, building business models that will be selling uh, micro elephants to wealthy bankers to, to uh, give as their presents to their daughters who would otherwise get a pony. Um, there are some really exciting stuff that's happening. I mean, there's a professor at, at Stanford that you genuinely wants to synthesize dragons. Um, and when you start looking at these trends, um, you know, the world uh, can either look really, really exciting or terrifying, right? And um, I think it's kind of the role of communities like this one to start pushing us towards that utopian future rather than building that dystopia. And, you know, I've seen it in my own work, right, where, um, you know, our business model, you know, uh, if we succeed in our mission, we're providing unrestricted uh, internet access for everybody. Um, that's the utopian version, but there is an equally likely dystopian version of our business model where you know, poor people in emerging markets only get to access content online that is sanctioned by Facebook. And that should scare everybody. Um, and so I think, again, I, I would love to be able to um, galvanize this community to start thinking about what our role is in putting our collective thumbs on that scale 
uh, to bias the builders in this room towards, towards the utopia because um, you know, the future has, has never been more exciting uh, or more terrifying. Thank you. Thank you.